Hey, good afternoon team. This is John Johnson uh, coming at you with a real estate market update. I know I'm going to do this with a ton of people, but uh, today I'm doing it with just myself just because I want to make it quick, uh, light, um, and easy and to the point. Uh, so part one is going to be the real estate portion of this. So let's get into it. So right here we have active listings. And as you can see, this is as of September 2023. This is active listings for the entire nation. Uh, brought to you by Realtor.com. I have links to uh, Realtor.com where I got this data from and some of the others um, as soon as uh, in the actual description. But as you can see on here, active listings, business as usual um, is not too much uh, compared to the last five or six years. There's one year that has had less listings than we have right now that are considered active. Um, and overall, it is just not a great time um, for buyers who are trying to find tons of homes on the market. You're still competing with other buyers uh, because of the lack of inventory. Uh, we also have newly listed homes. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are at the lowest that we've been in the last five years when it comes to people putting new homes onto the market. It just makes sense, you know, people over the last few years who own homes, um, they've gotten rates that are two, three percent over the last few years. Uh, and unless they have a really strong reason to sell, a lot of people are not really selling those homes. So uh, at the lowest point in the last five years with newly listed homes. Uh, pending listing count. Uh, so these are homes that are gonna be on the market and they are already under contract and pending to be sold. So probably off the market within 30 days as long as everything goes well. And as you can see, we are the lowest in the last um, four or five years when it comes to the pending listing count. Uh, days on market, this is the most important one to be able to determine what type of market that we're in. Um, if, we're on the, if we have low days on market, which means that a home goes on the market and within a, a couple weeks um, is under contract to be sold, normally that means you're in a seller's market because homes are, are going off fast um, and, and people are able to purchase those homes um, very fast and a lot of buyers are bidding for it. Um, it's not going to be the most advantageous market for a buyer. Um, but it is necessary still um, for a buyer that want to buy a home to get through that. Uh, if it is taking a lot longer for a home to get under contract or and or to sell, so if it's taking two months, three months, four months for your average home uh, to be able to sell, that means that we're going to be more inside of a buyer's market. Uh, that means that buyers have more leverage. They can be able to lowball sellers. They can be able to ask for more concessions, things of that nature. Um, and normally, uh, four months or less is considered... Um, uh, seller's market, so 120 days or less, and then normally six months or more is considered a buyer's market. And as you can see, we are still in a heavy seller's market. Um, it's been inching up, um, you know, over the past couple months, uh, which is normal for this time of the year. But overall, 48 days being the average days uh, that a home is uh, on the market is not a lot, uh, which means that you're still competing with uh, other buyers to get homes. Uh, Meeting listing price. Um, as you can see, we're neck and neck with last year over the past few months. So one month, you could have the news saying, oh, um, uh, real estate prices are, are going down. Um, it's probably like 0.1%. And then the next month, like, you know, they, they won't say it like that. They'll f find some way to spend negative, but it's going up. So as of right now, we are, uh, as of last year, up, I think it's like 0.4%. Um, it'll probably stay around that for the rest of the year. Uh, the main thing to understand is that, um, yeah, versus last year, we're not up a ton, but last year was an anomaly. If you see that huge jump from the previous year before, that's about a 40, 50K jump that uh, last year had from 2021. Uh, so even if it ends a year to where, you know, we're, we're, we're almost the same as the values last year or only up 0.5% or 1% uh, overall, you're still up 40, 50 K from two years ago and up, you know, 60, 70 K from three years ago. So, um, overall, it's still a good time for sellers if they decide to sell their home. Um, as long as they didn't buy their home, you know, less than 12 months ago, uh, price reductions, uh, this is showing, you know, a home goes in the market and then that seller has to reduce their prices in order to be able to get their contract, um, is right in line with coming the other years. Nothing sticking out when it comes to that. Uh, we also have our regional data. So real estate is a local market. It is a neighborhood to neighborhood game. Um, I'm showing these uh, national statistics and regional statistics. But when it comes down to it, it's going to be a local to local game. But it is good to know what is happening uh, when it comes to real estate um, in these different regions. So um, this is versus uh, uh, this is from September 2023 regional statistics. Uh, 
uh, from Midwest, Northeast, South, and the West. Um, and this is comparing to last year. Uh, active listings down for majority, except for in the South, is actually up a little bit. Uh, new listings uh, is down everywhere in the West. Uh, they are having hardly no new listings versus last year, down 16%. Uh, median listing price have all gone up between uh, three to ten percent. Uh, median listing price, um, I don't care about that one for per square foot, but the median days on market that's an important one. Um, if anyone's saying, Oh, what's happened to the market? Is the market getting worse? Is the market getting better? In every area of the country, it's pretty much staying the same. The median days on market has gone down a little bit, so it's become more of a seller's market which means more of a strong and active and healthy real estate market in the South. It went up one day, which is not, um, is not significant in my opinion. If it's going up 15 to 30 days in the course of a month, that's going to be significant. But a uh, one-day increase, it, it, that's hardly nothing in my opinion. Now, this is versus pre-pandemic years. So this is even more important because pre-pandemic years were actual normal years of real estate. And the listings that we have, and we have more buyers in the market now than we did then, even with higher interest rates. Um, and the active listing count versus pre-pandemic is down in almost every other con- area of the country, 30 to 50 percent or 30 to 60 percent. New listing count, that's down anywhere from 13 to about 33 uh, percent. Median list price, that's up about 40 percent across the board um, versus the pre-pandemic lim- numbers. And average days on market, you know, we're about half a month, about roughly 15 days on average for a majority of the country. Uh, these are some areas that I care about a ton. So I'm in the state of Florida. So we have Orlando, Miami, Jacksonville, Atlanta, and Tampa. Atlanta's not in Florida, but hey, it's a big market down here in the southeast where I'm at. Um, and it's kind of these same numbers. We have the list price, the list price versus last year, so year over year. Uh, active, how many... Um, that, how many act, homes are actively on the market, uh, new homes on the market, and then we have uh, days on the market, and then the days on the market versus last year. And so in Tampa, $439,000 is the average list price, which is not a crazy ton. Orlando's got that beat by about $16,000. Uh, Jacksonville's a little bit cheaper, and so is Atlanta, but Miami, of course, is gonna be well above everyone by at least about $150,000 when it comes to the average list price. Um, the list price versus last year, you know, all those markets, they've gone up. Not a ton, but they're going up about 1% to 3%. Um, active homes in the market, they're all down besides Miami. Miami is going up when it comes to active homes. New homes, uh, not actual new homes, but new homes to the market. So a home that has not been marketed for sale and is now newly being marketed for sale. Um, that's down in every market um, with Atlanta leading the charge with 11%. Days on the market. Um, this is going to determine if it's a buyer's or seller's market. So if it's less than 120 days, that's going to be considered a seller's market where seller has more um, leverage in the market uh, and buyers can't come in and really do too much with it. And as you can see, we're under 60 days, under two months for every market there with Tampa being the hottest, actually Atlanta being the hottest at 43, Tampa's very close to 44. And days on the market versus last year, is business as usual. It's maybe one to a couple of days more on the market than it was last year. Not significant. Uh, mortgage rates. So mortgage rates, as you can see, um, they were trending down for many, many years. Since the 80s, they were trending down. Um, and all of a sudden, they started going back up. Uh, well, that makes sense because the, uh, the the Federal Reserve, especially at the 2008, um, they've been getting their actual rates lower and lower and lower. It even got to points where it was at 0%. Um, so, uh, people were able to get money for very cheap for short term. Uh, the federal rate does not determine mortgage rates, um, but it does play some part in it. And as you can see over the past couple of years, uh, that rate has jumped up from about, uh, I would say about 3% to now currently about seven and a half percent, um, on average, which means many buyers will be getting rates in the 8%, especially if you're getting down payment assistance. This is uh, mortgage rates over the past year. Um, these are not exact numbers, but they're just, they're close enough. They're going to be within probably about 0.25%, um, uh, 0.1% for uh, hardly any buyer. And as you can see, uh, we went up into the sevens. We came down into the mid to low sixes. And now we're, you know, easily into the mid sevens uh, to high sevens once again. So mortgage rates are higher. 
buyers looking at, you know, versus a four or a five percent rate, uh, they're probably looking at five, six hundred bucks a month more um, on a same property just because the mortgage rates being higher. Um, so uh, it's, it's a tough situation for buyers. There are people out there that have to buy a home. They're moving. Uh, they have already have a home, but, you know, they have another kid. And so their homes get a little bit small for them. Um, so there's people out there that still have to buy a home and then they're, they're still aggressively in the market trying to buy a home. Um, but overall, it's going to be tough for them. But when it comes down to it, you can always refinance. So if you buy a home right now and you buy the home at a 7.75% rate, next year, rates jump down to 4% or 3%, you can always um, refinance and get that lower rate. Uh, so you, you marry the home, you date the rate. Uh, and also, we don't know how high these rates are going to go. There's nobody that's a crystal ball. Every single last person I know was stating that mortgage rates were going estimated to go down into the uh, into the four or fives this summertime, and that obviously didn't happen. So uh, you don't know where it's going to go. As long as the monthly payments work out well for you, I recommend getting the home uh, and then refinancing whenever those numbers get a little bit lower. Uh, so mortgage conclusion, don't wait. No one has a crystal ball of rates will go up or down. If you're thinking of buying or refinancing, then get numbers ran now by a lender. Uh, inflation. Uh, so inflation, that's the biggest driver of mortgage rates. Uh, the biggest driver was happening in the market period. Uh, and as you can see, uh, inflation has been, it, it went up uh, a few years ago, around 2001, 2002. Uh, I'm sorry, 2021, 2022. It jumped up from, you know, 2% all the way up to about 8%, almost 9%, depending on which inflation number you're looking at. And now it's back down to about 4%. So it's still higher than what people want it to be at, but it has come down some. Unfortunately, mortgage rates almost historically follows inflation. So if inflation is going up, then the mortgage rates are going up. And if inflation is going down, then the rates are going down. But it has not followed that right now. There's some other economic factors that have been keeping it um, the mortgage rates higher. Uh, so in conclusion, for like, all this real estate data, lower inventory, but homes are still being bought and sold. Uh, higher mortgage rates, but real estate transactions still happen in the 70s and 80s when the rates were over 10% for about 20 years. So no matter what market you're in, real estate is still going to happen. If you're someone that needs to buy a home, um, continue looking. Uh, and, and as long as the monthly payment works for that home for you, go ahead and buy the home. Especially if you're renting and you're trying to get out of renting, you're paying uh, 100% interest rate anyways because you, you're not paying anything towards principal. You're not getting any money back out of that. So uh, as long as you can afford a monthly payments on a home, uh, then I recommend continuing to look for uh, the properties. New construction is the most needed at affordable prices, but uh, that's not going to happen uh, right now. Uh, New construction has switched over to the same model that, from what I'm saying, that, that car dealerships have, where they don't really care too much about volume. They're not trying to pump out as many homes as possible. Uh, they care about gross. So they want every single home that they're, they're putting out there to gross, which it means to be as high as possible uh, for their actual price. Um, so they can put out, you know, they'd much rather sell 10 homes than sell 100 homes, as long as those 10 homes bring them a higher gross number than the 100 homes. So it's not a good, it's good for them, but it's not great for people who are out there like buyers trying to buy. Uh, the median home price of homes in the 400Ks, uh, well outpaced and affordable monthly payment as well for the average person. Uh, so f from people that I speak to a lot, uh, they like to be around 1500 2000 a month uh, for your average person with, you know, with your average job. Uh, some people can afford more, some people need a little bit less, but I would say about 1500 2000 a month. And at 400000 uh, that's going to put you at, we're putting down the minimum, about 3.5% down. That's going to put you at about 3,500 a month easily, uh, which is not going to be affordable for many people unless they're going into it with roommates. So buying a home is, is changing the game right now because no one's seeing home values that go down. Um, they just kind of corrected and went up to a price that they should have been out after the recession, for after the 2008 recession. Now there's back to a, a number that um, it, it makes more sense for the homes to be at. Uh, and when it comes to those monthly payments, um, unless you're high uh, wage earning for you and your family, uh, you're going to need to be able to have uh, some roommates, things that nature to be able to make it affordable for you. So overall, um, real estate is still going. Uh, it's still a heavy seller's market. It's still a very active market. It's not a bad market. Um, 
And if you're trying to buy, if you're a seller, you have a lot of control still. You can still get a ton of equity out of that home as long as you've had that home for more than one year. Um, But if you're trying to buy a home, you may have to be a little bit savvy when it comes to trying to get those numbers down. And if the numbers don't fully work for you right now, just be prepared to refinance within the next year or two. Have a great day.